next on Adventures in Dry Gulch. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. They're going to kill us and I'm too important a person to die in a wrinkled suit. Well, I'm a big bones. It's up to you. you got to go in there and save Nick and Demons and Mr. Tidewater. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I think I hear something outside. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Nobody move. It's Adventures in Dry Gulch, featuring the Sheriff, Gospel Bill, his sidekick, Nicodemus, the general store owner, Miss Lana, good old Elmer Barnes, and the entire Dry Gulch gang. Come on, Nick, we got a lot of work to do. Uh, I know, Fletcher. I know we got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do every day. I'm just tired. Sounds like you need a day off. A day off? Ha! Huh. I can't remember when the last time I had a day off was. Well, when's your vacation due? Vacation? Ha ha ha! I sure can't remember the last time Mr. Farnsworth says I could have me a vacation. Well, when I signed on here and signed the contract, it said after three years of working here that I got two weeks vacation paid and free. What? You mean the contract you signed says you get two weeks off after three years? That's right. You signed one, didn't you? Well, sure, I signed the contract, but, but I didn't know it said I could have two weeks off. If it was me, I'd be filing that contract then, Nick. You know, you're absolutely right, Fletcher. Well, I'm getting robbed here because I, I don't know what my contract says. Now, where is that contract? Well, I'll see you at the horses, Nick. Yeah, I'll see you. Where is that thing? Oh, oh, Mr. Tutwater, are you closing down for the day? Just for lunch, Elmer, and just for lunch. As a matter of fact, after I stopped by the boot shop, I was on my way over to Trudy Lou's restaurant to redeem this coupon I got out of the newspaper this morning. <laughs> oh, let me see that. Oh, it says here that you get a free piece of pie after your third visit. Oh, but Mr. Tutwater, look right here. You don't even have it stamped once, see? Oh, I know that, Elmer, but... Uh... I'll be able to talk Trudy Lou into honoring this coupon anyway. <laughs> but, Mr. Tutwater, that wouldn't be playing by the rules. Elmer, come here, my boy. Rules are for small people. <laughs> Not movers and shakers like yours truly, T.W. Tutwater. <laughs> oh... Mr. Tutwater, same, 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 same. Ooh, that wouldn't be plain fair at all. Elmer, don't you shoot that shamey finger at me right in front of my own bank. Now give me that coupon. I've been looking forward to my pie all morning. Mr. Tutwater needs to learn how to play by the rules. One of these days, that's going to get him in trouble. Contract? Where is that contract? No. Wait a minute. This is it. Famous, fabulous flying frog ranch employment contract. Okay, one, clause number three. No, 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 no. This is it. Whosoever works for the ranch must, after a three-year period, take a two-week vacation for rejuvenation purposes. It's written right here and signed by Mr. Farnsworth. I, I got to show him this. I got to do this. I, I give me a vacation. Oh, Charlie, these boots look like brand new, shiny as can be. How much do I owe you? That'll be one dollar, Mr. Tutwater. One dollar? Why, that's highway robbery. Well, Mr. Tutwater, I put new soles on these boots. I put new uppers on these boots. I practically rebuilt these boots. I think that's fair price. Why, there's a, there, there, there's scratches all over them, Charlie. Mr. Tutwater, I don't see any scratches on here. Well, take them inside and get your magnifying glass out. I'm sure you can find something. Now, you go in and fix those, and I'm going to pick them up first thing after I get off work, and I'm not expecting to pay a penny more than 50 cents. 50 cents? Why, well, at 50 cents, I'll lose money. Why, Charlie, who owns the mortgage on your business? All right, 50 cents it is. <laughs> 
Now, time for my free piece of pie with Trudy Lou's coupon. <laughs> See you, Charlie. Tight one, skin flint. Craig. This is one of my favorite creatures. He's Charlie, the orangutan. Charlie, I think you're going to have to go on a diet. Charlie, you did hear me, didn't you? That's what I thought. Orangutans are members of the ape family, but they're smaller than their cousins, the gorillas. Still, they're very large for tree dwellers. A male orangutan in the wild can be four and a half feet tall and weigh up to 160 pounds. Of course, Charlie, like other males in the zoo, can weigh more than 300 pounds. I, for one, happen to believe it. Orangutans come from two islands of Indonesia, Borneo and Sumatra. The orangutans of Borneo develop huge cheek flaps, but those of Sumatra have much narrower faces. I think that Charlie must come from Borneo. Now, scientists tell us that orangutans are some of the most intelligent of all land animals. They're famous for using their hands and have even been known to escape from zoos. In the wild, orangutans almost never touch the ground. They spend all of their time in the trees. Their powerful arms help them to move from tree to tree, and they sleep in nests far above the ground where they're safe from predators. No two orangutans look alike. Each has a very unique appearance, and like humans, each orangutan has his own set of fingerprints. The orangutan is funny to watch and shows us that the Creator God has a sense of humor. The Bible says that God created all things for us richly to enjoy, and that includes the orangutan. These hilarious animals are proof that our Heavenly Father wants us to be filled with joy. If you have a problem that's getting you down, take it to the Lord in prayer. He'll give you the answer if you'll pray in faith, and you don't have to wind up looking like Charlie. Hey, Charlie, let's hope that your little brother doesn't grow up to look exactly like you. All right, that's enough of that. What's the right old in the hands, though, Billy? Yeah, but sometimes a man's got to do what a man's got to do. Hold it right there. All right. Well, we finally found dry gold. Well, that makes sense. We are the belly boys, ain't we? The roughest, toughest, meanest outlaws in the entire old west. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, hey, hey, wait a minute. Don't you usually wear your pants on the other eye? Ooh, well, I'll have to think about that. Hey, let's go get rich. <laughs> oh, we're gonna be so rich, cause we got a plan that won't fail. <laughs> cause we're using our brains instead of thinking with our bellies. Yeah, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna kidnap that there bank president, Mr. Flushwater, or whatever his name is. We're gonna hold him for ransom, and we're gonna get them to bring him to us so we can give him all that money. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Aren't they gonna come and give us the money? Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Glad you're thinking. Hold it right there. All right. Since we're in town already, it should only take us a couple of days to find the bank. Let's get a going. Fletcher, Fletcher, Fletcher. Hello, Nick. Fletcher, 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 Fletcher. Picture this. Nicodemus laying on a towel on a white sandy beach. He's got a cold lemonade in his hand. Sun shining down. And you can hear the swoosh of the ocean. Swoosh, swoosh. All of a sudden, he gets too hot. So he goes and jumps in the ocean so he can cool off. Sounds like somebody's taking a vacation. You're absolutely right, Fletcher. I found my contract, and it says I get two weeks off after three years, and I showed him Mr. Farnsworth, and he says, Why, well, Nicodemus, I didn't know that. You better take you a vacation right away. We got to honor our contracts around here, so I give me a vacation. Sounds like you better get to packing. You're right. You're right. I got to pack. Pack, pack, pack. You know, Fletcher, it's sure a good thing that we work for an honorable man that honors his contracts and keeps his word. Blueberry, banana, coconut, pumpkin. Oh, 
Mr. Tetwater, sounds like you're ready for some pie. Well, I certainly am, Trudy Lou, and I think I'll just redeem this special coupon here for my free piece of pie. Okay. Oh, but Mr. Tetwater, see, this special is for when you come in three times, you get a free piece, and yours hasn't even been stamped once, so you'll just have to wait till another time. <laughs> Trudy Lou, don't be so technical. Get me my pie. Mr. Tapwater, it wouldn't be fair to the other people. Now rules are rules. <clears throat> rules are for some people, Trudy Lou, and uh, not for others. <laughs> Need I remind you that I am the president of the bank? Yeah. And the most important person in Dry Gulch, I might add. So? So, get me my pie. Mr. Tutwater, I said rules are rules. Need I remind you that my bank holds a mortgage on this fair establishment? Pumpkin, please! Okay, Mr. Tutwater, if I must. <laughs> I love power in the springtime. I love power in the fall. Hey, Dope Belly, seems how we found this air bank. There ain't nobody in there. Let's just forget about that kidnapping the bank president, Flyswater, and, and go in there and knock over that safe. You idiot! What would you want to go do a dumb thing like that for? Knock over a vault and make a big old mess like that? Well, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. And besides that, that would ruin our plan. Hey, no belly. Got a little bit of spit right here. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you looking out for me like that. Resume lookout position. Excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> I am uh, T.W. Tutwater, president of the Dry Gulch Bank and Trust Company, and uh, I'd like to apologize for my bank being closed. I was just over uh, to Trudy Lou's restaurant having a little bit of pie. <laughs> well, looks like you guys uh, eat a little pie yourself. <laughs> Look out positions. Quite the jovial type, wasn't he? Yeah, he appreciated a good belly, too. <laughs> hey, no belly, did he say his name was Icewater? Yeah, I believe he did. Well, isn't that the name of the guy that runs this here thing, the bank president? Hold it right there! That sure enough is. Let's go get him! <laughs> Elmer, 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 Elmer. Look at his face. Oh, yeah, so? You're looking at the face of a man who's about to take him a vacation? No. Yeah? No. Yeah. No. Yeah, let me tell you all about it. You see, I signed this contract when I went to work with Mr. Farnsworth. It says, after I worked there for three years, I can take me a two weeks free paid vacation. But I forgot all about it until I read my contract. You know, that reminds me of something. What's that? Well, you know, whenever we become Christians and we get saved and Jesus comes on the inside of us, it's kind of like we have a contract or a, a deal. Yeah, it's kind of like a deal with God or a, or a covenant. And we have all these promises that are ours, but unless we read them, we can't partake of those promises, Elmer. Ooh, something to think about. Well, excuse me. I got to go over and draw me out some vacation money. <laughs> Wow, I got to deal with God. You scoundrels can't do this to me. Why, I'm T.W. Tutwater, the president of the Bank of Dry Gulch, and the most important citizen in town, too, I might add. You better put a sock in it, mister. I'm going to blow a hole in your belly the size of the state of Texas. Yeah, and I've seen them do it. Uh-oh. Mmm, that's becoming a serious problem, isn't it? Oh, Mr. Tutwater. Hide the hardware. I'm glad I found you, Mr. Tutwater. Say I'm getting ready to take a vacation. I need some money and what? 
What is this? Billy Boys! This is this is the Belly Boy Gang. Mighty perceptive of you, cowboy. <laughs> what are you doing with Mr. Tutwater? Oh, we're kidnapping him. We're holding him for ransom. We're gonna get all the money in this here bank. Yeah, and since you stumbled onto our little party, we're gonna take you to. Yeah, stick him up. All right, Blob. Listen, you get over to the livery stable and saddle up some horses for us and take Flyswatter here with you. I'll keep an eye on the little lost cowboy. <laughs> Hold it right there. All right. What are you waiting on, Blob? Get a move on. This could ruin my vacation. Praise God. Father God, I just thank you that I have a deal with you. Hey, Nicodemus. Whoa, wait. Hey, wait just a minute here. Something looks kind of suspicious. Well, uh, uh, there ain't nothing suspicious going on here. Uh, isn't that right, Nicodemus? No, no, nothing, nothing suspicious here, Elmer. It's just Mr. Belly's taking me and Mr. Tutwater to a, uh, a, a, a party. Yeah, that's what it is, a party. Oh, you're going to a party. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I sure would like to invite you there, but, uh, well, I don't think there'd be enough cake for everybody. Oh, that's okay. I'm kind of busy today anyway. Hey, maybe you could help me out. I'm looking for a real good hideout, somewhere where I can hole up with a couple of hostages and write me a real good ransom note. You know any place around here like that? Hmm, let me think. Good hideout. Take hostages and rights from them. I got the place for you. It's the old Martin place, just about three miles outside of town. You just take the main road for about two miles, and at the fork in the road, you just take the right fork, right there behind that big old oak tree is the old Martin place. Well, thank you kindly. Real nice of you to help me out like that. Come on, Nicodemus. Hey, let's go party. Uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Wait a minute. It ain't Nick Damus' birthday. Did they say hideout? Hostages? Ransom note? Whoa! Would you care for some more beans? Good. I'm glad you're enjoying them. Miss Trudeloo, Miss Trudeloo. What is it, Elmer? The belly boys are back in town. Well, right now they're headed out to the old Martin place. And they got Nicodemus and Mr. Tutwater as hostages. They're holding them for a ransom. That's money. Oh. Not Nicodemus! <laughs> and Mr. Tutwater. Oh, no, not Nicodemus! Yeah, Mr. Tutwater, too. Well, somebody's going to have to save Nicodemus. What about Mr. Tutwater? Yeah, and him, too. But Gospel Bill's out of town, and Nicodemus is out of town, and Miss Lana's out of town. Elmer, you're going to have to save Nicodemus. Me? Yeah, you're the only one left. But I can't save Nicodemus. Now, wait a minute. Now, Nicodemus was telling me about a deal that I got with God. He called it a, a, co co a, co a covenant. Yeah, you got one of them, too? Yeah. Now, if I got a covenant with God, well, that means that all God's promises are mine. And Jesus lives on the inside of me. And I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Yeah, you can do it. I can do it. But wait, wait. You need a gun. A gun? I don't need no gun. I got my fishing pole. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, folks. Father, I just ask you to help Elmer save Nicodemus. And Mr. Tutwater, too. You can't do this to me. I tell you, my name is T.W. Tutwater, and I'm the president of the Bank and Trust Company in Dry Gulch, and I'm the most important person in town. Listen here, smarty pants. You don't hold that tongue, I'm going to carve my initials in it. <laughs> hey, Blob, I'm just about done with this here ransom note. How do you spell kill and maim? Ah, uh, kill and maim. Hmm. I don't know, but I bet old money bags here does. <laughs> hey, get over here, Blob. I need your help. Did you hear that, Nicodemus? They're going to kill and maim us. They're not going to do it, Tutwater. Yes, they are. 
I heard him say so. No, they're not. They're not going to do it because I got a covenant with God. Oh, don't give me that religious mishmash now. This is serious. They're going to kill us. This is not religious mishmash. It's powerful stuff and it really works. I'm going to use my covenant right now. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> Oh, they're going to kill us. No evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. They're going to twill us. The Lord's given me his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. <laughs> they're going to kill us. They're going to kill us. They're going to kill us. It's just like I thought. They took my advice, came out here to the old modern place. Well, Elmer B. Barnes, it's up to you. You gotta go in there and save Nick and Demas and Mr. Tutwater. But I don't know what to do. But I gotta deal with God. And I can do all things that Christ would strengthen with me. Father God, I just pray that you give me wisdom to know what to do. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. <laughs> They're going to kill us, and I'm too important a person to die in a wrinkled suit. Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. They're going to kill us. <laughs> you know, I love to see my victims grovel and squirm before I terminate them. Yeah, me too. <laughs> hold, hold, hold it right there, no belly. You got a little dribble. Oh, nope, nothing, just my mistake. Oh, well, good. I've been trying to quit dribbling. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I think I hear something outside. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. Nobody move. All right. Uh, tell you what, Rob. Uh, let's go check it out. You go first. I'm a little scared. I'm kind of scared too. Me too. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. What am I going to do? I need a diversionary tactic. Ooh. This log might come in handy. Ooh, something's telling me I need to get in there right now. A punch! Oh yeah, Nick Beams. I was able to do this because I got to deal with God. You mean you remember what I told you about the covenant? Why well, sure do. It was the Lord to help me to do this. <laughs> oh, horse feathers, Elmer. That was just a lucky punch. That's all. Now get me out of this rope. Oh yeah, you little fight, Mister Tutwater. When are you gonna realize God's got a deal for you? This is Eugene. I had to come and tell you about the most fantastic, most incredible, most stupendous thing in the whole wide world. Can you see it? It's this t-shirt with my picture on it. I got this from Gospel Bill. He's got a lot of great t-shirts for kids. He even has one with Jeannie Mae's picture on it. But it's not as nice as mine. Eugene! All right, it is as nice as mine. But look at this. It's the Godly Heroes t-shirt with Nicodemus, Gospel Bill, Miss Lena, and Elmer Barnes. They're all on the front. This Mark Amaya shirt says, I'm a Rovercomer. There's also an Elmer Barnes shirt. Boy, he sure likes to go fishing. And here's the best shirt, except for mine. It's the official Gospel Bill deputy t-shirt, complete with a badge, bandana, and a vest. All you supply is the face. These t-shirts are only $10 for kid sizes and $12 for adults. They make great gifts for birthdays, Christmas, and for parties. Ask your parents to call 918-437-0494 today and get some neat Gospel Bill t-shirts. You know, God's always dealt with his people by means of a covenant. Now, covenant means a contract or a special deal. And the deal goes something like this. God will do his part. He'll do his part of blessing for you if you will do your part. Now, part of that deal was to sacrifice different kind of animals like bulls and goats and then to obey all the commandments of God. And when you did that, you were keeping God's covenant. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Lord God, I thank you. I offer this sacrifice to you in faith. Oh, Lord, you've been so good to me. I thank you for this covenant you've made with me. Praise the Lord. Oh, hi. My name's Abraham, and I have a covenant with God. You know what a covenant is? It's a deal. I mean, it's a good deal. You see, God made a good deal with me. He told me that if I would serve him and listen to him and follow him, that he would bless me. He said that he would give me uh, children that would be as many as the stars in the heavens and as the sand of the seashore. And I'm going to do what God says. You see, God wanted a holy people, a special people, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start a special race for God, a special group of people. And I offer a sacrifice. Every now and then I just offer sacrifices and praise the Lord for this covenant he made with me. You know, this covenant's great. He says that he protects me and keeps me safe from all harm. All I had to do was give him my heart. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this covenant. Oh, all that God has belongs to me. All I had to do was give him my heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this covenant. You know, back in the days of the old covenant, they had to use a knife like this because they had to kill bulls and goats and calves. But we don't have to use this anymore because we don't have to do that anymore. The Bible says that we have a better covenant and it's based upon better promises. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6. And here's the way that covenant is. You see, God sent his son Jesus. And Jesus died as our sacrifice on the cross. And if you'll just believe and accept what he did for you, then you can be saved. Somebody says, Nicodemus, how do I believe? Well, you just pray a simple prayer like this. In fact, if you'd like to pray with me, you can right now. You say this. You say, Father, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I deserve to die, but Jesus did it for me. And I receive him now, and I thank you, Lord, for eternal life. You know, if you prayed that prayer with me, Jesus Christ came into your heart. And now you have access to all the promises of God. Why, if you have needs in your life, God will meet your needs. If you have sickness in your body, God will heal your sicknesses. No matter what the need is, all you have to do is pray in faith in the name of Jesus. And according to the Bible, that covenant which God gave you, that better covenant, that better deal, that better contract that's based upon better promises, it'll work for you because you see it's guaranteed by the precious, pure blood of the Lamb, and that Lamb was Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, if there's any need that you have in your life today, if you prayed that prayer with me and you're a believer, all you have to do is just believe God, just pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Because you see, we don't need bulls and goats and calves anymore. Uh-uh, we don't need that kind of blood because we have the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs>